Hello, welcome to lesson 15 of the Learn Swift for Beginners series. In this video, we're going to revisit initializers and I'm going to tell you about designated initializers and convenience initializers. Okay, well, let's get started. So right here, I'm starting off again with the blog post class and the person class. And of these properties here in the blog post class, I'm actually going to uninitialize some of these properties so I can demonstrate for you um, what we need to do in the initializer. Because I mentioned before that one of the jobs of the initializer is to make sure that all of these properties are uh, initialized and ready to go. So even if it is an optional, that is considered okay. When you're declaring your properties inside your class, there are basically three different ways of doing it. So number one is this one where you declare the property and you initialize it to some sort of value right away. So that's this body property right here and this number of comments property is equal to zero. The next thing you can do is you can uh, declare a property and set it to optional. So you're specifying that it could be nil or it could contain a value, but either way um, you have to unwrap the value and you have to check if it's nil before using it. Now the third way is probably the most dangerous way and that is using the force unwrap operator. So let me show you what that means. If I get rid of that question mark and I put an exclamation mark there and let's also do it beside author. So what you're saying here is you're saying that title basically is an optional. It could be nil or it could contain a value but you're going to leave it unwrapped. So when I access the title property down here and I say post.title, Xcode is not going to have that sort of safe checking or warning us um, that it could be nil. It's not going to provide any of those safety mechanisms and it's just going to let us use it as is. Um, so we can assign nil into title as you can see here it's nil. Um, and we can use it like a normal property, right? We don't have to check if it's nil or not. Or rather, it is up to us whether we want to do it or not. But however, if you know, the difference, the flip side being that we make this an optional, now there are some safety mechanisms in place. If I just try to use this as is, Xcode is going to warn us that, hey, you know, this is an optional, you have to uh, check that it's not nil or you have to unwrap it first before you can use it. So I might have to say if let, um, you know, actual title equals, and this is using optional binding. So basically we're checking if there's a value inside the optional first. You know, if something could potentially be nil, it's probably safer to use an optional value so that it forces the programmer to actually check things before using it. Now, if you set your properties like uh, that, then it could still be nil or it could contain a value, but you could sort of remove that safety checking that optionals provide. Okay, so those are three different ways that you can um, set up your properties. What you cannot do, however, is you can't just do something like that, where you declare a property, you don't set it to anything, you don't specify that it's an optional, or you don't specify that it's unwrapped, and you just leave it like that. In that case, Xcode is going to assume that the initializer is going to set those to some values. So let's declare our initializer here like you've learned in the past and inside here you can see that Xcode is still showing errors but if I actually initialize these things inside the initializer uh, let's say author is equal to person like that then Xcode is going to stop complaining because remember when we create a new blog post like this it's actually calling the initializer so even though these properties right here, title and author, they're not set to anything, they're not optionals, they're not unwrapped, this initializer is going to be called for sure when we create a new blog post object. And inside here, um, those properties get set to some value. They get initialized. And so at the end of the day, this blog post object is going to be ready to be used. Now this initializer right here, this is what is called the designated initializer. And what that means is that this initializer function is guaranteed to uh, fulfill those obligations of 
uh, making sure that all of the properties are initialized before use. In contrast, we can have something that's called a convenience initializer. And what that is, is you use the convenience keyword followed by your initializer um, method signature. So I might have something like this where inside this initializer, I only want to provide a custom title. Well, you might ask, if I call this convenience initializer, how is author going to get initialized? Right, so what happens is inside the convenience initializer, I call the designated initializer using the self keyword like this. So now, and inside here, let's set title equals custom title. So now, when I declare a new blog post object and let's say I use my convenience initializer like this and I pass in a custom title like this it's calling this convenience initializer but this convenience initializer is also calling the designated one which makes sure that at the end of the day you know the uninitialized properties will be initialized um, and then after calling that designated initializer, then we set title to custom title. So whether I call this designated initializer or the convenience initializer, um, the title and the author properties will be guaranteed to be initialized. And so the role of the convenience initializer is simply for convenience. So that's the difference between a designated initializer versus a convenience initializer. I hope that was clear. And please like the video and share the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more. I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.